How are you, buddy? Anyone I can. <laughs> Everybody, please rise. Thank you. Dear God, today as the session opens, we pray that your presence will be before us and everyone who serves in this decision-making process of our city. We pray for direction which will lead our city to be strong and unified. May we continue the legacy of our founders. May we be granted this day the wisdom to make decisions which will be for the good of our city. We also pray for your special blessings on all those who are working to transform our city and make it a better place to live and work. Amen. Amen. We'll now do the uh, pledge. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council Milanazzo. Here. Council Noon. Here. Mayor Samaras. Here. Council Cirillo. Council Conway. Here. Council Elliott. Here. Council Kennedy. Here. Council Leahy. Here. Council Mercia. Here. That's eight present. I don't believe there are any moments of silence. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have the minutes, uh, except for the minutes of the Transportation Subcommittee of August 26th, the City Council meeting of August 27th for acceptance. They need a motion to accept the place on file. So by Mr. Mil Council Milanazzo, second by Council Noon. Uh, regarding unfinished business with uh, Council Cirillo, of course, she's not here tonight. I, I want to carry this on to the next if, meeting. If there's no objection, Mr. Mayor, can we put that off until the next meeting? I will second it. Thank you. All right, it's too early to go into the general public hearing, but I believe uh, we have some speakers on uh, motion 6.1. Do I have a motion to bring this out of order? So I, moved. By uh, Councilor Conway, second by Councilor Mercia. 6.1 is the vote to accept and expand grant from the Mass Trails program. Waive the full reading, second reading by title. Authorize the city manager to accept and expand a, a grant associated with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Mass Trails program it is administered by the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation, Department of Transportation, Executive Office of Energy, Environmental Affairs, in the amount of $180,000 for the City of Lowell Department of Planning and Development. Uh, 
Uh, before we have a motion to adopt, any discussion? Councilor Conway, no? I'll say. <coughs> move, to move to adopt. Okay, uh, move to a motion to adopt. Move to adopt, Mr. Mayor. By Councilor uh, Kennedy, second by Councilor Conway. Before we have the roll call, anyone speaking on this issue? There, I believe there's speakers here. Um, Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, through you to the Council. Uh, my name is Eric Slagle. I'm the Director of Development Services. Uh, I, I just wanted to uh, speak in favor of this motion. Um, this is a, a, a project that uh, members of the Council have advocated for and the Department of Planning and Development has been working on uh, for several years now, uh, which is an attempt to uh, plan the extension of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail that currently ends at the Chelmsford border. Um, one of the crucial pieces of this um, uh, proposed continued trail uh, is the portion of uh, former rail right-of-way that uh, extends from uh, Industrial Ave and goes underneath the little connector to the rear of the, uh, the Target Plaza parking lot. Um, uh, the Mass Trails grant that, was, uh, that the council is voting on tonight uh, would be used to plan and then construct uh, the, a portion of that trail. It would be 1,200 feet long, uh, 10 feet wide, paved with asphalt, be fully accessible, um, uh, and uh, would begin the process of the city connecting uh, the Bruce Ruin Trail to the wider array of trails that are available around the city. Um, and one of the things I did want to, to highlight is the partnership that we are working with with Peter Jarvis. Peter, if you'd come up. Peter uh, is the current owner of the parcel, um, and he's been working with the city to grant the city an easement to allow it to be used for conservation use and allow the trail to go through in uh, uh, correspondence with his ownership and use of port a portion of the parcel to, to um, uh, aid his, uh, the, the car dealership that is adjacent. So I thought it was appropriate to have Peter here tonight um, because without his cooperation, this portion of the trail really wouldn't happen. So I think uh, it's, it's appropriate that we recognize Peter for that yes. tonight. Thank you. Mr. Jarvis. We have a few words to say. Do you have um, nothing much other than it's good to see the things are finally moving along and put this together. Well, this has been a long time coming. It's been a little bit. On behalf of the city council, and, and, the, and the city department, I mean, seriously, thank you for all the work and your support for this project. It's very mm -hmm. important. Not a problem. A I remember walking out there with Ed for two and a half years ago. Yeah. So yeah. it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Roll call. Yep. Council Milanazzo. Yes. Council Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Council Cirillo. Council Conway. Yes. Council Elliott. Council Kennedy. Yes. Council Leahy. Yes. Council Mercier. Yes. Seven yes. Yeah. We have some speakers in another part of the program, but. Uh, Your Honor. Yes. Can I just mention one thing? Um, Council Leary did a lot of work with this, too, so I just wanted to mention him. He put in a lot of work when he was here, um, going out there, walking the trails and everything, so. A lot of people. Thank did. you. Yeah. Thank you. You're, Thank you. You're correct. Thank you. Uh, but what I'd like to do is go into communication to the city manager, so we'll have time for the uh, speakers later on. So we're going to go to communication with the city manager. First, motion response resource recovery center. Councilor Elliott, do you have any questions regarding that? No, I'm also thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Next motion response was. Maintenance, custodial school work items that could be potentially be completed. Council Milanazzo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you uh, for the report. I certainly appreciate the detailed uh, breakdown of the services that are currently provided by outside contractors. And let me also say that I thought that the schools really throughout the city looked good uh, this year, opening day. So congratulations to all of the maintenance and custodial staff that uh, they got the school buildings ready. But again, um, as this report indicates from Commissioner Snow, that they'll continue to look at and monitor the various uh, work items, and in the event that they need to do that or take something back to the custodial staff, they'll do that, but I certainly appreciate the report. Thank you. Thank you. Next motion response was line striping by Council Leahy. Yep, thank you. Um, I just had a couple of questions if Natasha was here. 
Natasha Vance is here, traffic engineer. Hi. Hi, Council. So I just, where are we now, like, with the second contract? Are we going to be able to roll that in and get... Yeah, so um, I did hear back from the contractor. They have available dates the end of September. I'm working on um, the, the what streets we can get done for the amount that we have left in the contract. And then um, the, the city did include an additional, um, so we'll be able to do some striping in the fall and then again in the spring. And in between that time, we'll figure out, um, we'll have to negotiate a new contract or put out an RFP for a new contract. Um, for line striping for it presumably for the next three years. So we'll figure out what, what we'll try to cover in an annual um, on an annual basis. Right. How long should the road should the lines last two years? Well, um, generally speaking, because we have such inclement weather up here and the plowing, the paint is going to last usually one year, sometimes two years. It really depends um, the thermoplastic, which is 10 times more expensive than the paint and something that's um, much more complicated to put down because typically you want to grind the pavement and then heat it up and then um, lay the plastic down at, and it um, requires special equipment, hence the expense. That will last three to five years in our climate. Um, and again, it sort of depends on if it's, if it's not recessed, sometimes the plow edges will catch it and you'll see it kind of cracks. But um, generally paint one to two years, thermoplastic three to five years. Okay. So... Um... I don't want to get into your job, but like working this week in the Highlands, like Westford Street oh, yeah. and Stevens and mm -hmm. Parker and um, Wood Street, like Agreed. they're gone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Pike Street's gone. Um, parts of Middlesex, yeah. I mean, um, in truth, priorities. yes, Westford is definitely at the top of my list. Gorham is one um, of all of the streets you listed. In truth, there's many, many, many streets in the city that need to be painted. We won't be able to do them all, but I will do my best to do at least the, the main ones. All right. And just one, so when I added up like the figures that you gave us, I thought that we had enough money to do about 20 miles. So I mean, you, you, it, depends, just... it depends on the street, right? So each, um, if the street has a double yellow line and double fog lines or has double or skips or, um, yeah, so, Generally speaking, we can get about 200,000 linear feet um, in a contract. So we should be able to get a decent amount done. That, so the last time we painted overnight, we got 210,000 linear yeah. feet. I think we'll be able to do that again. So that should cover quite a bit. Okay. Um, does that add up to about 35,000, though, is it like going from the numbers that you gave us? So, again, it's, a very, it's an average because it's um, it's... It's very, it's hard to answer that specifically because it varies based on the street. All right. And then just lastly, um, so when they're outlining, do we actually have a, a police detail? So yes, we have to have a police detail. In addition, we have a city employee that rides along to, um, because essentially, you know, we're only going to stripe, say, say we're going to Westford Street and then loop over to another street. So we have um, someone with them at all times. Yeah. All right. So like Market Street did when the guy rode his bicycle. Yeah, that's <laughs> frustrating. Um, I, see him. <laughs> I, I did hear we were going to try and power wash that a little, but I guess he came through 10 minutes later. And oh, all right. yeah, I would appreciate if people wouldn't drive on the wet lines. That right, would be right. great. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. We all set, Council? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Next motion response Hannaford's Plaza, left turn. Council Nuanazo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I appreciate the follow up. Uh, I. Looking at the packet, I see that a violation notice did go out to the owners of 777 Rogers Street on September 5th, and they have seven days to comply. So um, if we could just keep the council up to date as to what, I would imagine they're going to put the do not enter sign right. back up. It's possible it was struck by an right, automobile and just right. didn't get put back up. But okay. we expect cooperation. Okay, great. But we'll Thank keep you. the council posted. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Next, we have uh, crosswalk repainting. Afternoon, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you for the report, uh, Madam Manager. Um, I, so the crosswalk that's been completed, um, the Belvedere, Centerville, Pentuckerville, downtown, and the Acre, and the, Acre. Uh, the Highlands now being, you're working on it. How many people working on the crosswalk? Three. Three people? Yeah, it's a total of three in that department. So, so when do you expect the Highland to be completed before you move on to back central? Uh, Natasha Vance is here, who's been working on this 
Yeah, I don't have an, uh, an exact date. I know that they're just, they work in neighborhoods just to be efficient, so they go from one crosswalk to the next. Um, we have two crews, they're one man crews, so one man uh, paints a crosswalk and another paints a different crosswalk, um, which is, uh, you know, you can imagine we have so many crosswalks in the city, it takes a really long time. I don't know when they'll be done, but, um, and I know that there are still other crosswalks here and there throughout the city that um, need to be painted as well. So, so every day, there were three staff from the SANG department or the low police would go out mm -hmm. and do that? We have, um, we have two, two um, pieces of equipment, so it's two crew members, and then there's a, a supervisor, but um, he is, you know, they have a, a number of other duties that they're um, attending to as well. Yeah, I do get um, mm -hmm. dozen of call the last couple of weeks with Back Central. They're saying that the crosswalk there was horrible, and yeah. they, they want to see that done sometime soon. Yeah. So. Um, one of the things that we're undertaking um, as part of our obligation under the Complete Streets Project is a crosswalk inventory so that we can have a better list of how many crosswalks there are in the city and really get a handle on the actual um, manpower and paint and effort it takes to um, paint them because th there may be a better solution than a two-man crew. Um, given all of the other things that they have to do, it might be something we want to look at, including in a, um, in a contract. Um, it may be in the line striping contract. I, I think that's a good idea if we mm. can do that, you know, yeah. and come uh, get back to us on that and see. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for the report. Councilor Conway? Yeah, thank you. Uh, through you to uh, Natasha, I, I, I thank you for the report. Uh, what I was, on this particular motion, I was zeroing in on the, on the schools mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, there are certainly so many different streets that need uh, the, the painting. Uh, and, I, and I thank you for explaining, I was going to ask the question, what's the difference if we put this other type of paint on? I, mm -hmm. thought, I thought that type of paint would last, a better paint would last uh, up to 10, 10 years. Uh, not, in, not, not in our climate, um, probably in a warmer climate with, without plowing. But. So as the, the concern, and, and you, see it every, you see it every year uh, at the schools, and I know a lot of parents have, have mentioned it, uh, the fact that these crosswalks are not for the most part, done around the schools. So that's why uh, when I put this motion on, I wanted to uh, kind of concentrate on those areas, mm -hmm. especially with school opening up. Sure. Uh, and uh, cars, uh, cars even, even when they're freshly painted, a lot of cars will just go right through when you've got yeah. somebody in the, in the walkway there, yeah. um, which, um, you know, which is obviously another problem. But uh, what it, can you explain now as far as the schools are concerned uh, are, are we all set with, with all those schools? Yeah, um, I spoke with the sign department. He, they confirmed that um, all of the crosswalks leading to schools have been repainted. Um, I can, we can confirm that, but that he said that that was one of his big priorities was getting yeah, and, that done. And I realize that it, it, it is a massive job. It is. It's a, like a Herculean task to do everything. Yeah. Es especially we have, what, three, three. three people? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, again, the emphasis I, I thought would mm -hmm. be on the, on the school area. So I'm yeah. glad that we've got that dealt with. Thank you very much. Sure. Any further discussion? Next, we have motion response, uh, police retiree detail. Uh, that was a motion by myself for, to establish a home rule petition, Councilor Leahy and Councilor Conway, uh, to uh, support this issue. Uh, any of the Councilor Council Conway? Yeah, thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. The, the fact is that uh, we see that it's extremely important because we have three counts, four councilors that are putting a motion on. Uh, and we discussed at the last meeting the, uh, the possibility or the feasibility of taking some of those retirees and utilizing them in the high traffic areas at peak, at peak hours. Because I think everyone is going to agree with the fact that the traffic in the city is certainly uh, a problem. And with these additional projects with uh, the roads and buildings and so forth uh, and bridges, it is certainly going to complicate uh, the traffic flow uh, in the city. And I think that we've all b experienced the log jam where at an intersection somebody's tying it up and you can't go anywhere and that, that uh, light constantly goes from red to green, red to green, and nobody's moving. So, uh, and we know that there's a penalty for that. I think it's $500 yeah. to be in the middle of that. Uh, so if at all possible going forward, it might be uh, worthwhile if we can 
if we can utilize those police offices in peak hours so it can uh, mitigate the, uh, the traffic in the city. Thank you. Council Lee. Sure, I was just gonna ask you for an update, Madam Manager. Sure, um, thank you, through you to the council. So the, the council did send a home rule petition down to the legislature. The, uh, both the House and Senate passed the home rule petition and Governor Baker signed that into law on uh, September 3rd, just uh, about a week ago. Uh, so now the next step for us is to sit down with both the Superior and Patrolman's uh, unions to negotiate the language. It's our understanding there is not an objection, um, but we do have to negotiate language. Things like uh, right of first refusal for you know active uh, police officers and the like. Uh, but. Uh, it, it does appear that there will be ample detail work coming forward um, as we're expecting as these projects get underway uh, that this could be a big benefit to, to the city to cover details. One of the challenges can be filling details when there's so much, um, so much demand. So we will be, uh, the law department uh, will, will be contacting the union and both unions to sit down and, and just hammer out the language as to implementation of the uh, retirees. Well, thank you uh, for that information. I think it's important also to note that with all the construction that will happen, it's an issue of safety. So we're ensuring that we're gonna have people who are qualified to handle the situation and we won't, there won't be a shortfall uh, in covering those positions. So thank you for that work. Mr. Mayor. Yes. If there's no objection, could we um, postpone items G and H into the next meeting and take them up onto full business at that time? Yeah. Second, by S Councilman Milanazzo. Thank you. Uh, next we have petition responses, four way stop, High and Roger Street, Madam Manager. Uh, yes, the, uh, there's a report in the packet. Uh, this was a uh, private um, resident who had petitioned uh, the uh, city to look at this. Uh, Natasha Vance, our traffic engineer, did look at it, has included in the packet the explanation. Um, the conclusion is that it, a four-way stop is not warranted at this location after assessing the traffic, the crash history, and, and the like. Mayor. Any questions? I, I don't have any questions, but we do have some very young uh, residents here for, I'm assuming they're for the subcommittee report on the cannabis control. Um, so could we take that out of order? Well, the thing is we're, we're approaching the seven o'clock. Okay. And it's a, it'll be a short, it won't, it won't take us long to cover that. Uh, do you have any other, Councilor Kennedy, you want to take anything out of order? Uh, we talked. The question, the question, I'd like to raise the question to the uh, council. Uh, the second candidate for the uh, auditor's position turned the position down. So we have not put, it, put anything on the calendar for a vote. And the, the question is, uh, what's the will of the council? Do we want to host or do we want, we want to have uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. vote? Yes. I, I, um, I, would, I would move that we um, repost the position and just redo the process again. Yeah, I'm not a second. Okay, you got a second for that? Yeah. But I have a question for it. Yeah. Okay, we'll second it. Do Council we know Council. if the, uh, the third candidate was interested yet? Ms. Callum? When I spoke to the three candidates, um, just probably about a month or so ago, um, she was still interested at that time when they gave me an idea of if they were elected, appointed to the city auditor, they could start the first week of October. And I haven't spoken to any of them since. All right. I mean, my feeling would be out of respect. They came down, they interviewed, we should take a vote. If, if there's no desire to hire her, then that's fine, then we repost. Well, the first vote, the motion, the first thing is to... Uh, yep. Post the positions again. Yeah, I'm not going to support that motion. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, we had three candidates. We've posted it twice in excess of several weeks, and I thought they were all good candidates. And um, I'm not sure what we're going to change or what we're going to amend to attract more candidates, but we had candidates applying 
uh, you know, for the second time that uh, that we interviewed. So I think I thought she was a good candidate. I voted for her the last time. Why we're going out? Uh, if the notion is that get someone with a CPA, in large part, certified public accountants do private accounting. This is public accounting. Uh, it would be nice, but I think history has showed that we've had CPAs. They stay and they go back to the private sector because they can make a lot more money. So I think she's a good candidate. I don't see why we're going back out again. Um, so I'm not going to support the motion, and I, I think we should hire. Um, I think we should hire Ms. Day. Any other comments, Councilman Nelson and Council Conway? Uh, thank you. Um, I I point to support the motion. I just think it's such a, a vital position. Um, yes, we did post twice. We had uh, three uh, qualified candidates uh, come in, but the last candidate still standing um, is not a CPA. She also informed, the, and she had a good interview. Don't get me wrong. Um, but she informed the council that she could not be with us um, until I think her classes on Tuesday night that she teaches at Northern Essex were over. So even if we hired her, based upon what I heard her say, she can't be here for a while. That would have to certainly be uh, cleared up as far as I'm concerned. But I plan to support, uh, support the motion to go and repost. Thank you. Council Conway. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my concern that I have is if we repost this, this is going to take another, what, three, four weeks before we, before we sit down and interview these candidates. In the meanwhile, um, there's a, a lot of work that has to be done, a lot of paperwork. Um, what, what would the plan be to make sure that all these reports are, uh, are finished and, and brought to the state? Do, do we have any kind of a plan for that? That's a good question, I believe. Well, the manager will discuss that. Uh, so, so uh, obviously, uh, Karen O'Byrne is acting as the as the acting uh, auditor right now. Um, the CFO has uh, looked into bringing in someone as a consultant to do things like close out the books and so forth. I'll let Mr. Baldwin address that so that the council may be prepared, depending on the date that someone's available. Or even if they're available tomorrow, they'll probably, if they're brand new, they're probably going to need some assistance. And this individual has, has done this previously for, for the city. So, Mr. Baldwin, if you want to look at, address that. Thank you, Madam Manager. Uh, so there are a few specific deliverables every fiscal year that are required by the auditor uh, of a municipality in Massachusetts. There is the uh, year-end balance sheet, the Schedule A report. Uh, as well as signing off on several reports that are submitted by other city officials, the, the treasurer and other financial officials in the city. Uh, so all of those need to be completed by certain dates and we are, um, we are approaching those dates. So we do have a consultant that is willing to come help us uh, submit those reports and to compile all the information once the year is closed in Munis. Uh, and I, I would recommend that we uh, take advantage of this proposal. I think regardless of uh, who came in as the candidate, we would need to do that. Yeah, it's thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just very briefly, I, uh, we interview, interviewed these three candidates. I, th I thought they were very good. Uh, and I think each and every one of them uh, had something to bring to the table. Uh, but I do believe that all three of them could have been effective in the job. Uh, so therefore, as far as I'm concerned, I, I don't have an appetite to, uh, to repost this particular job. I think we have a, a good candidate, uh, the, the third candidate, and uh, uh, I wouldn't be supporting the motion. Councilor Noon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you, uh, to you, through you to Connors. Uh, Connors, um, you, you just indicated that you plan is to bring in the consultant. Um, how confident are you that the consultant would do those close the book and everything in an orderly fashion? Uh, very confident. This uh, particular individual came to the city in 2000, and I believe it was 2015, after Hannah York, uh, the auditor left, and he assisted the city with the preparation and submission of these reports at that time. Uh, everything went um, went very well, and I, I suspect that he and his uh, company will be able to do the same again. So he done it before, and is he local? 
I believe he's based out of Framingham somewhere, but he is uh, a well-known um, person in the municipal finance community. Uh, he is the one who set up the chart of accounts for the city of Lowell originally, um, some 20 years ago, and he is very familiar with our, uh, the way that things work in Lowell. And he's available to come and close the book in That's a correct. timely fashion. Right. Um, you know, given the intent or the preference of this council when the discussion about this, the, the, the job description and the, all that, that we said we prefer candidate with CPA. Uh, this is an important position, one of the three that's high by this council. I think open the job up again, maybe third time is a charm. Uh, so open it up, you know, and clearly um, a third candidate can still, you know, um, submit her resume, if she continued to be interested in this position, uh, given what you know, the city managers and Connor uh, have indicated, you know, and, and given the facts that our acting auditor uh, seem, as the, seem to be doing a great job, uh, I would support the motion to reopen the position at this time. Yeah, just just very quickly, I, I think that uh, if there's if there are three candidates that applied for the job, um, we offer it to one, and they turn it down. We offer the second one, they turn it down, and now we don't offer it to the third one. I doubt very much whether the third one would um, third candidate would reapply uh, for the for the job for the position. Uh, through you to um, uh, Connor Baldwin, how much would this cost per? hour uh, for the consultant. Is that the way they're, they're paid? How much, how much an hour for that? Uh, yes, it is based on an hourly rate. I don't have the proposal in front of me right now, but I do recall in 2015, at the same hourly rate for the number of hours required to complete the reports, it was somewhere in the vicinity of twelve to $15,000. And, and we wouldn't know we wouldn't know how much that was an hour. But the, the reason why I'm asking is if we have a qualified person um, in, in this third candidate, uh, how much an hour would they actually? Is there any way to to figure that out roughly on how much an hour we'd be paying them versus the consultant that comes in? I'm, I'm not. I'm sure sorry, I, I didn't mean question. to put you on the spot on that. Um, could you ask that question again? Yeah, I, I think that if we take the, uh, the cost of the, um, uh, the candidate, the, how much they're gonna, they're gonna get per week or per hour, I mean, we should be able to back that up. You get roughly 40 hours times 52. How much money are they making at that point? If they're making $115,000 and divide it by 52, and it gives you how much they make a week. Now we divide that by 40 and that's what's going to give you for, for the hourly wage. I'm just wondering what the difference is between bringing a, a consultant in, that's all. Do we have any idea? I, I just um, wanted to, and I, I get we're crunching the number here, okay. uh, but I think the recommendation is based at the point in time we are in, in the year, even if someone came on immediately, we would recommend that we bring in the consultant to help accomplish all those deliverables because of the time requirement. And if someone's brand new, it might be difficult for her uh, to get those accomplished in, in short order. So it might be fewer hours if someone's in, in place right away and can assist, but it's, um, it's, it's quite an undertaking and it's not something the acting auditor is qualified to do, is my understanding, is that? That's correct. All right. Thank, thank you for the clarification. I appreciate it. Council Milanazzo, Council Mercy, then Council. Thank you. Just to follow up with the city manager said, I, I thought by listening to what we were told relative to the timing that the consultant would be coming on anyway. Even if we voted tonight to hire the auditor, the consultant would still be coming in because the person who's still standing doesn't really have that much municipal experience. So I would think that um, she's not going to hit the ground running and meet these deliverable dates in my opinion. I don't even know if the other two could, but I'm, I'm certainly of the opinion 
the last one standing could not. So the consultant's coming in regardless of what we do tonight. So um, again, I'm going to support putting it back out. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it's only reasonable that we narrowed this down to three candidates. The first couldn't take it because of the fact that it didn't coincide with the fact that she could come right away. There was even talk amongst this council two weeks ago that we try to renegotiate with her and see when she could come here. But I'm not that, at the point where I want to beg someone to come here. That's not my understanding. So we chose again, and we chose the second one. He decided not to. The third one, of course, she wasn't a CPA, but she was very knowledgeable. She was very willing to come here and, and serve. I think it's only fair that we offer her the position. And if she says no, then I'm sure unanimously, because we could go out to bid again, go out. But the fact is that I can count, and I see it failing, four votes, four to four, it's going to fail. So I don't know where we're going, but I'm not supporting it. Thank you. Councilor Elliott? Yeah, I just, I, I just want to... <clears throat> air my feelings on this. I, I personally think that if this is such an important position that we have all heard, we have been without a department head in one of the most, if not the, the most important departments in the city for going on four months. I think that's grossly irresponsible to again want to go out when we have very qualified candidates. I don't know what the end game is, apparently there is, but it's delay after delay and it's a significant position, and that person's going to need some time to get up to speed. So we're going to go through another three weeks of posting, another couple of weeks of advertising, probably get the same candidates again. And I think we have a qualified person who's willing and, and in my opinion, very able. She has extensive background and fund accounting, and that's what we want. So I'm not going to support it. I'm a little frustrated because we have to open a new year, we had to close last fiscal year. We have the tax recap sheet. We have to certify our free cash. The independent audit should have been selected and, and gone underway. And we're going back out. So whatever the end game is, I don't want to be part of it because we need to get this department. Out. We should thank the employees who have been able to keep things going. Karen, staff, payroll. You need an auditor in there. So that's. I, I just feel like I had to say that because um, it's it's just it's irresponsible to continue to play games to play politics with this position. Uh, uh, Council Lee, thank you. Just one quick question to the solicitor: Are we under any obligation the way this is played out? If if you have three finalists and one declines and you go the next, is it only reasonable to assume that you go to the third? So are we we're, we're protected? We're are we under any? Right, the, the council is well within its discretion to make an offer of employment or to not make an offer of employment. And with respect to the number of people that the council interviews, um, you are not then obligated uh, to go through, say, a pecking order and extend a, uh, ultimately extend a uh, offer of employment. Council Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just happen to think that this position needs to be filled by a CPA, if at all possible. It's always been filled by a, a, a certified public accountant, and I think it's important. It's an important position. We're talking about a lot of money, um, and I think it's worth waiting. I don't know where the idea comes that, that uh, we're playing politics or that there's been delay after delay. Certainly, nobody on this council has caused any of the delays. Uh, but I do think that it's worthwhile trying to to try to get a certified public accountant for this position if possible. It's, it's as simple as that for me. Just for the record, yep. Council, Mr. Mayor, we've, I don't know where Council Kenny gets his, his information. CPA is rare in this position. Cheryl Wright, Walter Fernandez, Brian Perry, I mean, the list can go on and on. Those CPAs that we do get leave. So um, let's just, Set the record straight right. here. Well, the thing is, allow me at, at this point. I, I don't know if anyone 
you know, that wants to play a game. That there was no delay set by any city councilor here. We selected one. It was a process. We selected a second one. It was a process. They declined. We're now at the third one. Regarding the CPA, as far as I'm concerned, I think we need a CPA because what I saw in the school department, you know, it, it took a year, over a year and a half to straighten that budget out in the school department. And I don't want to put us at risk. And that's the way I'm looking at it from that, that point of view. I mean, uh, we almost lost the school department in a sense of because the funding was so uh, mishandled. So with that said, let's roll call for, to, uh, for the vote to. The motion is uh, by uh, Council County, second by Council to repost the position city auditor. Council Milanazzo. Yes. Council Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Council Cirillo. Council Conway. No. Council Relia. No. Council Kennedy. Yes. Council Leahy. No. Council Mercia. No. Four yeas, four nays. Motion fails. Motion fails. So, Mr. So Mayor, I make a motion that we reach out to Cheryl Dick and see if she's still interested and offer her the position. Second. 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 Uh, vote. Council Milanazzo. No. Council Noon. No. Mayor Samaras. No. Council Cirillo. Council Conway. Yes. Council Elliott. Yes. Council Kennedy. No. Council Leahy. Yes. Council Mercia. Yes. Motion fails. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I, I would move that we take the matter up again when we have the full complement yes. of the council. Second it. <laughs> Just uh, we'll take it up again with the full council. And it was seconded. Any discussion on that? Okay. Uh, Mr. Thank Mayor, yes. so let me ask you if, if we're gonna wait for the full council, do we do we bring in that consultant right now? So do we do we make a motion to to yeah, you make uh, the yeah, that would be our recommendation. I, I'd make a motion to bring that consultant in at, at this particular point to, to, to get things going. I would second okay. it. Second, second by Council Noon. Thank you. A roll call. Roll call. Can I have a well, question, Mr. Mayor? I'm we, sorry. We, we no. have two motions on the floor now. We've got the, the, the motion to put it off till as a full compliment and the motion to bring in. I would be willing I wasn't, to I wasn't going to have a roll call. I, I just assumed okay. that there was an acceptance. All, all I'm saying is just to make things be a little easier, I would be willing to accept um, Councilor Conway's recommendation as an amendment to the motion and just amend the motion, just do one vote. Is that, is that all right with you? That, that's fine. As long as we get the consultant yeah. in there, I, I don't care how it's done at this point. Councilor Elliott. Um, so through you to um, city manager, where um, where are we at in the process of bringing a consultant in? Where are we in terms of meeting our obligations to the Department of Revenue? Uh, well, I'll, I'll let Mr. Baldwin um, address this. We did reach out to the consultant, as has been stated, who has um, provided the services in the past. Um, he, his company, he is available, and he did send us a proposal. So, um, Mr. Baldwin, as far as timetable, in terms of the DOR and what we need to deliver. Uh, we fully expect that if the council so chooses to move forward, uh, we will have the consultant in forthwith and we'll have everything in place to submit to the Department of Revenue uh, in, in due, due time. So under 30B, we don't have to go out for bid, but do we solicit? They're um, exempt from 30B. They're, they are exempt from it, that's fine. We have a, a ballpark and a number of hours and um, that we're looking to have them provide that service. The consultant has submitted a proposed scope of work with uh, the hourly rate is $130 an hour. Um, so like I said, the last time that he provided a similar scope of services to the city, it was approximately $15,000 in cost. Okay. And in the meantime, we have that, the old auditor's salary lapsing. So it's not as if we're still paying somebody and this is an additional cost. So, okay. Discussion. We have to go into the general public hearing. I think you need a roll call on that. I'm sorry. You need a roll call on that, don't you? It involves money. It involves I'm money. Sorry. You're right. I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you, Captain Miller. Council, 
Councilor Milanazzo. Yes. Councilor New. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Councilor Cirillo. Councilor Conway. Yes. Councilor Elliott. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Leahy. Yes. Councilor Mercier. Yes. Eight yeas. All right, we're gonna to go to general public hearing. Order to vacate, discontinue, and abandon portion of Easton Street. I want to open the hearing for those who want to speak in favor. Want to speak in favor? Anyone in favor? That portion is closed. Anyone want to speak in opposition? 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 That portion is closed. The hearings are closed. We need a motion to refer to the clerk's office for seven days. So moved. Councilor Kennedy, second by Councilor Mercier. Next, order to vacate, discontinue, and abandon the portion of Montreal Street. Open the hearing for those who want to speak in favor. Anyone want to speak in favor? In favor? That portion is closed. Anyone want to speak in opposition? Opposition? That portion is closed. Hearings are closed. We need a motion to refer to the clerk's office for seven days by Councilor Conway, second by Councilor Mercia. All right, I need a motion to take 9.2 out of order by Councilor Don't Conway, move. second by Councilor Kennedy. This is the Cannabis uh, Control Subcommittee meeting. Councilor Elliott, do you want to? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the Cannabis Control Subcommittee met uh, last Thursday again, uh, essentially in large part to concerns from neighbors and uh, regarding community meetings that have been planned and that had taken place. Uh, so that at the subcommittee meeting on Thursday, myself, Councilor Conway, uh, were present, uh, Council Noon, I had a previous engagement, but we had Eric Slagle, we had uh, Nancy Judge, we had former mayor and city councilor Caulfield uh, in attendance and speaking as well as, well as other uh, individuals um, throughout, the, uh, throughout the city. Uh, so again, the intent of the meeting was to get an update from the administration, Mr. Slagle was pre present. We went through the, um, what the process is, and we knew from the first subcommittee meeting way back when that it really wasn't a good process because uh, prior to any host agreement being signed with the city administration, applications were submitted, and uh, under the law, whether it's before or after an agreement is signed, uh, um, companies interested in, in marijuana retail in the city have to have a community outreach meeting. Uh, with that, uh, and even unbeknownst to me, there was one held uh, at the Elks uh, the Monday of last week. Very few people were notified, and quite frankly, uh, we learned that they didn't even submit an application. So it's become a source of frustration uh, for pe people, particularly up in the Highlands neighborhood, where uh, in large part, um, six applications have been received. We did ask Eric Slagle for a list of those. Um, at the subcommittee, they have been furnished by you, Madam Mayor, Mrs. Slagle, um, Madam Manager. Thank you, as well as a map to accompany um, the, loco the locations. Uh, so I know there are some registered speakers, but um, so th there was a motion that came out of that subcommittee, and we, we spoke at great length um, about um, the, in my opinion, the disproportionate number of locations in the Highlands. And we actually, uh, the subcommittee went, um, myself, uh, Council Conway, Council Mercia, we attended the, the meeting after the subcommittee meeting. Men, many members of the people that attended the Cannabis Control Subcommittee also went to that community meeting at the VFW. Uh, and that meeting was again for um, a proposed location um, in the Highlands. So in total, the six in the Highlands has been nine applications, <coughs> excuse me, nine applications received and uh, one of them withdrew only to resubmit. So it's, it's a bad process as you and I agree, uh, Madam Manager, that's the way the law has been written. But um, you know, nevertheless, certainly in the Highlands, the major concern, the major outcry is, um, is the traffic. And anyone that has been down there recently since school is back in knows that the Middlesex Corridor and the people in that corridor and affecting the highlands, it's utter, it's utter, it's just gridlock. It's gridlock from two o'clock to 7.30, I waited 20 minutes to go over the bridge. So um, that was, um, uh, I, th I think that's a recap of the meeting. Uh, following that meeting, as I mentioned, we attended the VFW and uh, we have 
Um, we have petitions of 40 people that were at that meeting signing opposed to, uh, to the location on, on Weber Street. And there was, uh, to say the least, there was significant frustration among the residents with the notification process or lack thereof. And I think that has been the case since the beginning. So without further ado, um, I empathize with the people in the Highlands. There is a disproportionate number of, um, of applications in that area. There was a motion that came out of the, um, out of the subcommittee meeting by Council Conway, seconded by myself, um, to have the manager look into not even re having the city receive any applications. And we understand that they can submit their applications, but um, I guess the request was some, some measure to, um, to stop these community meetings because there is a, a, there's angst among neighbors that um, they have received some agreement, some permission, some uh, approval, when in fact they have received none. They're, under the law, we're required to have five retail shops in the city. The council went through great length to establish zoning districts that were uh, that, that we we thought were appropriate, not affecting neighborhoods, trying to locate close to business districts, close to the highway, so there wouldn't be a burden in any neighborhood neighborhoods. These locations clearly have an impact on the highlands, and I'm sure many of the residents are going to speak. So uh, we need we have five, we have to have five. We have one that has caused no problem on Industrial Ave. There's four to go. There are other locations, two in Belvedere, um, one on Bridge Street, and the remainder in the Highlands. So um, I, I just want to reiterate, as we did at the subcommittee meeting, and as you have done, Madam Manager, the applications have been received, but by no means has the, any approval be given for any location, certainly not six up in the Highlands, and that will not happen. I, I think that knowing uh, the criteria that we have set for the first one with traffic and congestion, that will not happen. So I'm gonna stop there because there's many folks that wanna speak. Um, uh, as I mentioned, um, you know, the, the meeting following uh, the subcommittee was um, was well attended, and there was significant frustration. Myself, Council Conway, and Council Mercy were there. That's the report of the subcommittee and the following meeting, Mr. May Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Before the speakers, Council Conway. Yep. To speak. Thank you. I'll be very brief because I know there are a lot of speakers that uh, want to come up here and voice their uh, uh, their concern. Uh, I echo uh, Council Elliott's uh, comments. Uh, I, I myself lived up in the Highlands for a number of years and the traffic was bad then and it's, it's bizarre right now. It's absolutely crazy. And the fact is that um, uh, when, when they have these meetings in the neighborhood, uh, it, it, it immediately heightens the, the pressure and the concern uh, to the residents, which I can well understand. Uh, it, it, the, the whole idea of getting that information out to the people uh, to let them know so that they can show up and voice their opinion. You know, we, I think it, what we can do is, is reach out maybe to Lowell Sun, if they could put that information in, whether it's on the radio, CAP, or whether it's on McDonough's television, whatever it may be, any kind of media, so that, that people know that there are some type of meeting. And, and again, when you talk about the potential of six sites up in the Highlands, I can certainly understand why these people were here because that doesn't really make a lot of sense, to be quite frank with you. If I was living up in the Highlands right now, I'd be a little nervous, and I'd be very nervous, and I don't think any neighborhood can sustain uh, that, type of, um, that type of problem and bringing those people into that, uh, uh, these companies into that area. So again, I think we have to go back to the drawing table, uh, drawing board, and make sure that it is a fair uh, process and that these people that want these retail places play by the rules. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Madam Manager, we're gonna let the people speak and then ask you to respond. Or do you wanna respond at any point? Oh no, I, I think we wanna hear, the, as, as has been just mentioned, we did say to each, and these are applicants, these, nobody's been approved um, and we did tell them to, they, under the law, they are supposed to have a community meeting. This is very different than the planning board if they were going to get an agreement. Uh, and they have to notify abutters, that's under the state law. Uh, so 
The point is so we can hear from the public, quite honestly. It's important that we know the public uh, input on locations. Mr. Clark? Um, Jeffrey Feldman. Thank you. Uh, I want to start by just Jeff, thanking. We need your name and address, oh, please. Oh, Jeffrey Feldman, 1541 Middlesex Street, directly across from Five Weber, uh, Unit 8 in that condominium. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank Councillor Mercier and Elliot and Conway uh, for coming to that meeting. Um, I've not always been kind to the two of you, <laughs> and I think when you get something right, you deserve, you deserve recognition. I, I think you understood what was happening. I also would like to thank Councillor Kennedy, who got back to me on the phone. I didn't keep track of how much time, but it was a lot, um, as is usually my custom with Councillor Kennedy. Um, so I just, uh, I, I think that 5 Weber Street is dead. I mean, I, I'm hearing that from every corner. Um, but I think that what we have to contribute to your deliberations in the future is our experience of this particular firm and my understanding is it wasn't unique to that firm. However, Northeast um, uh, Alternatives uh, is based in Fall River. It is one of two firms in Fall River. I'll assume you've all heard the news. The mayor's been arrested by federal marshals. Um, it's not clear to me what the dispensaries did in that, but he, they, the, the, uh, the federal the U.S. attorney, rather, um, seems to believe that the mayor got some money from somebody uh, in the marijuana business in, in, that, in his city. So uh, I, I, I would like to thank the U.S. Attorney's Office for their timely arrest. That, that, that is also helpful in our deliberations. But I think that what I saw was the matter of notice was deceptive. It said, sir, and I, Councillor Elliott has a copy of the one that I got, and I think Councillor uh, Mercier has seen it. It said certified mail. It wasn't. They have no cards. They never use certification process. There's some indication that somebody had their door knocked on Joffrey Street and some guy with, a, with some kind of tablet got her signature for the letter or whatever. That's not appropriate either. Um, and then the letter itself uh, said VFW Hall 692, no address. These people did not want us to come. You know, that, that's my conclusion from that. Um, then uh, the, the, the next problem was that this is a community meeting, but the questions were asked and they were evaded again and again and again. Do you, do you guys agree? Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, there was, there was a couple of people at the meeting that probably threw them off their, their timing a little bit, <laughs> but, um, but they were evasive. They were evasive regarding traffic. They claimed to have a traffic analysis and then they hand us an operations report from an engineering firm here in Lowell that really did not address that concern. Um, Middlesex Street not only has a lot of throughput, it has a lot of turnoffs and turn-ons. You know, uh, you know, anybody who looks at, at, at a map will see that. And so the actual, whatever the actual flow through the street is, is not fully representative of the problem. Um, you have a lot of retail businesses, and that's great, um, but you have a, a towing truck company, you have a gas, um, uh, a gasoline um, uh, outlet, you have Dunkin' Donuts, which is a probably pretty high volume, uh, you know, and, and so it's, it's, it's not a very conducive area. And I, I have to wonder at the process, you know, perhaps in some way the city could have just said, guys, you're in the wrong place. We got some other places for you, but this is that's not going to work. Don't irritate our, our, our citizens because we'll say no, no matter what you do because of the traffic, something of that effect. I, I think that that may be a place where the city can, can, um, can avoid this kind of pressure on the electorate, which is not in the interest of anybody that needs a vote. Um, the other thing is that I, I, I believe the Cannabis Control Commission is just not doing its regulatory job. It's, uh, that's, that, that is a, either that or these guys are lying about what their process was. Um, to give people of Lowell the, the view that this is just, they're just informing us of what they're gonna do um, where we have no input is a lie, as we've, we're going to demonstrate tonight, <laughs> because they're not going to get that site. So, you know, they, they were not presenting 
what our role was as citizens. I think the Cannabis Control Commission can change. 300 foot of butters is not representative of the people who would be affected by that location. Um, you know, the fact is anybody who lives between Princeton Boulevard and Middlesex Street and Wood Street and where the, you know, the, more or less the, the, the vertical by the Bergeropolis Bridge is going to be drastic, would be drastically affected by that business. Um, I Excuse did, me, I, Jeff, Jeffrey, it's, you have to come to closure. If you, yeah, okay. Five minutes. I, one other thing I need to mention since we're wrapping up is, is that they mentioned this queuing system. And the queuing system was, as I understand it, was in response to uh, the disastrous early um, uh, shops where you know, traffic just went berserk, there was no control over it, so there's this thing where you apply uh, with an app. I, I'm sorry, I didn't know the time I had, it's but I, I, I'll just give my, this is one no, more please. point. Please. What? You have to end it. I have to end? Yes. Okay, sorry, I think uh, Attorney Santos will address the queuing system. Thank you. I apologize, but we have to. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Just, All right. It's five minutes for everyone in case anybody went beyond. Arthur Santos. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, to speak this evening. Your name, please. My name is Arthur Santos. I own the property at 24 Weber Streets in, in Lowell, Thank Mass. You. I'm you. speaking in opposition to the cannabis dispensary location of 5 Weber Street. Um, so, like I said, I own the property at 24 Weber Street, which is diagonal from the proposed site. I'm intimately familiar with this neighborhood because I've lived and worked in that neighborhood for almost 50 years. I grew up in the house and I have a small law office as well as a real estate company. Anyone familiar with the location knows that this is not an ideal location for a cannabis dispensary. It abuts one of the busiest streets in the city of Lowell. Traffic is congested on a daily basis from the Rourke Bridge all the way to the S Bridge where the Humane Society is located. As a bit of bi background, I know we've covered this, that on September 5th, um, a company called Northeast Alternatives held a community outreach meeting on Plain Street. They were gonna discuss their proposal for this site. Despite concerns whether or not proper notice was given or any um, notice to some people at all, it was very well attended. I was able to obtain a petition with 40 signatures, which I've handed out to some of the city councilors. If anybody needs a copy, I do have um, multiple copies here. I'm also told that uh, one of the owners, uh, and who also was in charge of the condo association, said that only herself and one other member received notification. There are 32 units and only two members received notification. I understand that it's not in your purview to determine that they gave proper notice, but I did want to bring it to your attention. At the meeting, the presenter informed us that the property values would not go down. Being a real estate attorney and broker for over 20 years, I informed him that I beg to differ. He also referred to his com company's success at the opening of a facility in Fall River. He claimed that traffic had not been an issue except on the 4th of July. However, I was able to retrieve an article from the Herald News two months ago today where there are people complaining about the traffic situation. In fact, the article quotes the CEO, Kyle Bishop, that business has increased by 10% every month. So on top of the traffic issues, his business has increased 10% every month. I'm not gonna be much longer, but I'll wrap it up. When asked how many cars, me and Nancy Judge asked, how many cars are you proposing or anticipating each day to go to this site? You're not even gonna believe what he told me. He said he wanted to go back to verify the number because he didn't want to give us an accurate number. He left the table, went to his colleagues to verify the number, came back, and he told me the astonishing number of 750 to 800 vehicles a day. This figure is just outrageous considering the current state of traffic currently on Middlesex Street on a daily basis. I just can't imagine how this location could be feasible. In closing, I respectfully ask the city manager and this council to reject this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Baruch Poor. Thank you. Uh, my name is Baruch Poor, P O U R, and I live on 525 Bibber Street. Jason to the five, wall to wall. 
Thank you. I came over here on, uh, when I get, became an American citizen, I swear to flag to the United States of America. I didn't know if it's the United States federal is against of the, this thing, the marijuana, but the state has it. What to do with us? We are somebody, we are living in here, living in the Massachusetts, living in law, but we are American. I'm American, I naturalized right. with me, my wife became American, but they are putting too much pressure on us to do something, the federal say no. I'm Iranian resident. Now think about it. If I have a, a, something like that in there, the federal control airport, most of places, if I go there, and somebody see me with a um, little bit marijuana in my hand, or somebody was walking, talking to me with a hand, I'm gonna be banded in the airport. This is not law for me. This is, that place is no good for me. And I am, the people they can, the last time in here, I called up the police because they have a shootout near the, um, on Middlesex Street, and the bullet hit my house. The, when the bullet hit my house, my mother had a stroke, and I had to take her to the hospital. Now, if you give permission to do this, this place, with the, all the traffic, I'm gonna come over here, get a permission for the helicopter landing in my house. Because cannot go anywhere. I'm going from right now, if anybody from Weber Street, going to the Middlesex Street, gonna take about the 15 to 20 minutes to people give you a okay. cake. If the people, it's 200 people, they come in towards the Middlesex Street, behind the building, coming to the River Street and, and coming back to the Middlesex Street, what's gonna happen? People on the River Street has to be sitting at home and walk to the market basket or walk to the uh, Walgreen. I'm just the one person in here. I'm begging you guys to not to do this. Thank you. Thank you for you. Thank you for everybody in here. I'm just putting my heart for you guys. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Lara Zara. Uh, my name is Laura Zada. I live at 1541 Middlesex Street, unit number 16, and I'm on the board of the Commons Condominium, and I'm here to say that I am definitely opposed to the cannabis shop at 5 Weber Street, and I represent the Commons. I'm on the board, and I'm here to protect all 33, resident, all 33 units at the Commons, um, we have a lot of children in our, in our association, and there is a bus stop right on the corner of where, the, where that shop is going to be. Children go there. I mean, in the morning, they're not going to be open. They propose to be open from noon to 9 p.m., seven days a week. Children will be waiting there and, and getting off the bus right where that shop is. It's not a safe thing. Also, the major problem is from the Vergopolis Bridge to Wood Street, right now, is a parking lot. Every day, five days a week, during, from 2.30 to 7 o'clock, when we asked them at the meeting if they had ever been there on Middlesex Street, they said they had at 9 o'clock in the morning. 9 o'clock in the morning, we asked them, did they do a traffic study? They said no we would not be able to get in and out of our driveway if they had added cars there. It is literally 
a parking lot. We, you cannot travel. I mean, it's just red sea of cars. If they added the kind of traffic that they want, that they're proposing to have, it would just be unmanageable. And they say they would go down Weber Street. Weber Street is a very small street. You cannot have cars going two ways up and down Weber Street. It would be unmanageable. So I'm asking that you please do not allow this. It would not, it's a residential community. I know that it is, it is zoned commercially, but we have residences all around. It would not be safe for our community. It would not be manageable for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Ed, Edward Caulfield. Mr. Mayor, members of the Low City Council, Madam Manager. There are many people here from Weber Street, and there's people here from Columbia Street as well. I'm going to give you a brief history of the Rourke Bridge, Wood Street, Westford Street, and I'll be brief on that. Every single day, there's 14,000 vehicles that traverse over the Rourke Bridge through the intersection of Wood and Middlesex Street onto Westford Street, hoping to get to Route 3. And there's those 14,000 cars, this return from Drum Hill, Westford Street, Wood Street, and hope to get over the Rourke Bridge. As the previous speaker indicated, from the Virgopolis Bridge to the Rourke Bridge, you're constantly touching your brake. You're not going anywhere. And as bad as the Weber location is, the Columbia Middlesex Street location is ludicrous. I can throw a football, and my arm is as good as it used to be, but I can throw a football from that location to the base of the Rourke Bridge. It's ridiculous to put anything there. And, Madam Manager, these people notified four people. Four. Because I went to a meeting August 28th at the Low Lodge of Elks, thinking I was going to a meeting for Drum Hill. And to my amazement, this gentleman from Somerville was applying for a marijuana retail store on Columbia Street. And the question posed to this man was, how many parking spots do you have? He, we have 12. The next question was, where are the employees going to park? We'll find a place for them. I know by law, Madam Manager, that the city of Lowell has to have a minimum of five retail marijuana stores. And you have a tough job on your hands. But I went to a meeting last December, and this is when this all started, at Westford and Stedman Street. And the applicant uh, arranged for the meeting to be at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Fifty-five people from the neighborhood showed up. To his amazement, he indicated, I don't know where you all come from. And the answer from the people were, we're not stupid. We know why you had the meeting at 1 o'clock. You were hoping that no one would show up. That person who applied has left. They're gone. Now, I attended a meeting last night. Nancy Judge convened a meeting, the Highland Neighborhood Council. The gentleman from Industrial Avenue was there speaking to the people. I do not have a problem, or my neighbors don't have a problem, with the Industrial Avenue site. Why? Because there's a low connector, Route 3, 495, 
anyone coming north, south, east, or west. It's easy access. They come in and they leave. Madam Manager, do you know that they're expanding over there? And the question I pose to this gentleman, roughly how many customers you get a day? He says, between 750 and 800 people a day. So that's Industrial Avenue. And then the second site I know has been proposed, the old registry building off of Chancellor Street. That's in the Highlands. I don't have a problem with that site because there's a low connector, easy access, in, out, they're gone. But then there's another site, 1201 Westford Street, Drum Hill, right across from Low Ford. Those 14,000 cars that I mentioned earlier all travel by that site in the morning and when they return at home. I go up to Drum Hill three or four times a week. At 12 o'clock noon, I have a hard time taking a left on Parkhurst Road. The traffic is just inundated with traffic. It's, it's everywhere. Mr. So, you, bear, you, you bear with me, Mr. Time. Mayor, please. The thing is, I have to do it for everybody. I, I'll be done in a minute, all right? The Weber site, I, I never heard about the Weber site. I did hear about the Weber site. I never heard about the Columbia site. Never heard about it. It come like that. By law, you have to have five of these retail stores in the city, but not all five in one neighborhood. That's why these people are here. And, 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 and leaving, I'll leave you with this quote, and it's well known. Government of the people. Government for the people. Government by the people. And as Coach Belichick indicated many times, do your job. Shelly Bethel. Shelly Bethel. There's no more speakers. No, there's no more speakers. Madam Manager. I'd like to speak. No, the thing is, only registered speakers. I'll suspend the rules to allow the people that are here that want to speak. This is Second. democracy, Mr. I Mayor. I'm, you, I know. You've established rules. You make a motion. Well, I if made it's the passed, motion. we'll do it that way. I made I the motion. On, de on democracy. You understand that? Come up, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tom Fuse. I live at 23 Columbia Street, which is about 100 yards, maybe, or 100 feet, I should say, from their, your proposed location. We want to put the cannabis shop there. And uh, I lived over in Highland since 1968. And I've seen so much growth over the years. It's, and, and it hasn't gotten really better. It's gotten so worse. It's, it's so hard to explain. I mean, my street now, there was, there was kids growing up on that street when I moved there, young kids playing. Now. If a kid ever went out on the street there now, I swear to God, they would get killed. My street has become a racetrack because they're trying to cut from Princeton Boulevard down Columbia to Dodge Delights, Middlesex Street down Columbia to Princeton Boulevard to get, try to dodge the lights. And they're racing down there. They're going 40, 50 miles an hour. I've seen a guy come down my street so fast, I swear to God, if a kid ever walked down on the street, he'd be dead. Dead, without a doubt. 
And you know, that man said that they only had eight parking spaces at that location. He said, possibly we can get 12. I don't think so. Eight parking spaces? It doesn't, ma it doesn't make any sense. You know, I agree with Mr. Caulfield. That is the worst location that you could ever imagine to put a place like that. I live there. I have to try to get out in the traffic all the time when I have to go someplace. Most of the time I try to walk if I can. But if I have to go to the VA, I have to get out into the street. It's a, it's a nightmare trying to get out on the street. Nobody wants to let you go because they, they were all in a hurry. I can't get out from Columbia Street for me to get out onto Middlesex Street if I don't have my car ready to nail it to get onto Middlesex Street, I'm going to get hit. Because when the light turns green, coming across wood onto Middlesex, the other side of Middlesex, they come so fast, you don't have seconds to get out onto the street. They come down so fast. It's, it's unbelievable. So I beg every one of you to please, don't let this happen. Please. <coughs> please. Thank you. Thank you. It's been opened up. Uh, Your name, sir? Leave, my name is Tel Saul. I'm live on uh, 109 Weber Street. I had just moved there three months ago. I thought I'd move away from uh, uh, chaos place. I found out that uh, you know something such as this is uh, being proposed, and we don't want it there. Traffic. It's not safe for all the children. Uh, and it's it just, we don't want it there. And I think everybody's here agree the same thing, and you know, we, we here want to speak opposition of that. And I, I, I think that's enough said. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Joe Misho. I live on Joffrey Street, the next street over. I just have two things that I like to mention, and everybody's been talking about the traffic. <clears throat> Excuse me. I actually have to, I used to just go down Weber Street, coming home from work, and I can't even do that anymore. I have to go to Hadley Field, come around so I can take a right-hand turn to avoid the traffic. The second thing that I wanted to bring up is I work on Industrial Avenue. During the day, at lunchtime, I take walks, and I walk by the cannabis store. And every single day for the last three months, four months, there's 20, 30 people waiting outside. They only let 10 people in at a time. Uh, they have police details there. And all I can think of when I see these people is what happens when these 20, 30, 40 people are at a school bus stop waiting to come in. And it, to me, it just doesn't seem right. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Hello, everybody. My name is Melissa Coy. I live at 18 Joffrey Street. Um, thank you for letting me speak, even though I didn't sign up. Um, I just want you to know um, that that cannabis dispensary is right behind my house. Over the fence where my children are swinging on their swings and playing on their slide, that's exactly what's in the back of my house. So um, although the, um, the zone is for a commercial building, all around that is residential areas. So I just want you to make sure that um, everybody knows that too. There's children all around, neighbors all around, and it's not just businesses in that area. Thank you very much. Anyone else? No, just, yes, go ahead. Mayor, Tom Bellegarde, 25 Joffrey Street. Looks familiar. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, as you know, I used to work for you guys, so ironically, everybody on my street feels as though I'm on the cutting edge of things, even though you folks know that I haven't been around. Um, but ironically, I know very little about this cannabis situation in terms of the laws, what's mandated by the state, what the guidelines are about the city. But what I've been telling people is, I do know the city council, and I know there's no way we're alone on this. 
And I know that under what, what we do know, what we've learned from this meeting, the meeting we had uh, last week, uh, and some of the things that were talked about that meeting, that uh, this cannot, will not go on unchecked. I, I know it will not. Uh, just a couple of quick issues, and I won't believe the situation here. So uh, one of the issues that they brought up was, was the bus stop situation, which is it's a real issue. Uh, there is a string of bus stops that go along Middlesex Street, Mr. Mayor, and uh, these aren't bus stops that are heard by little high school students. These are little kids that are getting on the buses, uh, uh, grade school kids with their parents. And one of these bus stops are right in front of this proposed location. So when the concerned parents ask this gentleman, being concerned, uh, there's no problem with being concerned because they're gonna have security on site managing their lines and moving these lines along. And people in the audience, I'm thinking, they already know they need security to manage their own people, which in my, in my own mind, that's a concern to me. Uh, in terms of uh, managing the traffic, well, I did ask the question, how did they get so far without a traffic study? And to my surprise, the gentleman told me, oh, we did do a traffic study. That's why we amended our proposal. We reduced our proposal down to 800 cars a day. 800 cars. That's a lot of cars in and out. A lot of cars. So there's a lot of things that, as I said, and, and we we'll mentioned here tonight, and th that are concerning. Uh, but again, I, I know this council, Mr. Mayor, and, and I know that this is it just, it's just all wrong, and I know that um, we have good people that are leading the ship here, and I know that we're going to do the right thing here. So thank you for your time. Thank you. We all set. And just and for the record, um, as, as the mayor, I, run, I chair the meeting based on rules and regulations set up by this city council. And the city council has set up the five-minute rule. The city council has also set up in a meeting where you, know, you have to register. But also in the process, because I would never deny the, I mean, I may be accused of denying the democratic process, which I don't like which I would always allow it to happen. All that had to happen was a motion made, motion passed, and you're allowed to speak. And I want to say one thing. I want to thank everybody for coming down. And I'm telling you something. You're being listened to. There's no question that this is the way it does work. But understand, it has rules. I follow the rules. And then I act at the will of the city council. Okay. Councilor Kennedy, then Councilor Mercia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I, first of all, I just want to point out that no, this city council didn't didn't pick this location or any of the other locations. City manager didn't pick this location or any of the locations. These are all uh, just proposals that are brought in by uh, people in the private sector that are interested in opening up stores like this. I think that um, probably the three busiest streets for traffic in the city might be um, Middlesex Street and Bridge Street and Rogers Street. And many of these proposals are to be situated on those streets. And so the meeting that we're having tonight with, with uh, neighbors, we're going we're gonna to have this all of the time unless we do something about it. I think what these people need to realize, and by these people I mean the people that are proposing to, to open up marijuana stores, is that this is destination retail. They don't need to be on a secondary highway. They don't need to be on a busy street. Wherever they are, people are going to find them and go there. Um, Patriot Care on Industrial Avenue East, they're off the beaten path and they do very well. Somebody mentioned that they have a, a line out front all of the time. You can cite one of these stores at the end of a dirt road and people are going to find it and they're going to go there. They don't need to be on a, on a main thorough, thoroughfare where, from experience throughout the Commonwealth, they end up causing a lot of traffic congestion that is just difficult for people and, um, and also costly. I think, too, what should be pointed out is that the, the authority for this is not the city council, but rather the planning board, and that it might be good for this city council to communicate to the planning board um, that these people, number one, should look for um, retail locations that are not on um, that are not on, on busy streets. And also, too, they may uh, 
I would recommend that they come up with guidelines, like how many parking spaces should they have, and what, what are their, store, their hours of operation going to be, and how much security, or how many uh, traffic control people are they going to have. I think that they save everybody a lot of time and trouble, including themselves. Um, if they were to go to have a set of guidelines that the city recommended that they have going forward and, the, and, uh, and comply with that. And I would think that it would make the planning board's uh, job a lot easier than, uh, than maybe what it will be. But I, you know, I think that, I don't think anybody on this city council thinks that it's a, a smart idea to put a, a traffic generator like, like this store will be um, on Middlesex Street nor does it make any sense to put it on Rogers Street, nor does it make any sense to put it on Bridge Street. They really need to be off the beaten path, and I think that, that if they're going to be successful and if we're gonna, ever going to end up with five locations, they're going to have to be at locations that are off the beaten path. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and neighborhoods, I might add. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first off, I did attend that meeting at the VFW, and I'd never seen people so upset in my life, and I was glad I was not the person proposing this, because they don't want it in their neighborhood. And I think they're under the belief that we as a council, we don't vote. If we were to vote tonight, you would never have that on Weber Street. I know that for a fact. I could count... Or Columbia Street uh, thus, f thus far. But we're not voting. It isn't up to us, the ultimate decision, and I don't want to throw you under the bus, Madam Manager, but the final decision rests with you. And, but, and I don't think that, and we're begging you too, please don't support this. This is crazy. To section one, to, to pinpoint one section of a city and want to shove four or five or six in one neighborhood is not right. To have a dis, uh, place to sell marijuana and have children waiting at a bus stop, not acceptable. So I agree with a lot of what Councillor Kennedy, uh, said, well, Councillor at this point, since you're at a city council meeting, w to say that with the things that he said, I agree with that. The only reason I was at the VFW t for that particular meeting, and I'm I'm thrilled that I was there just to see what I saw and the outrage is because Arthur Santos notified me as a family friend. He notified me or I wouldn't have even known about it and I notified other people about it that ended up going there. This is not the way we as a council should find out about this. I don't know why we did not know about that meeting but if there's other future meetings I would like this council to be notified about it so we could go. Um, I understand there were other meetings. I never knew about these other meetings. Nobody informed me. That's not the way to be. And, and now I'm understanding a little bit more that these places that we see tonight, um, for example, uh, 450 Chemsford Street, is that the old Registry of Motor Vehicles? Yes. Which is very close to the highway which I don't really see too many places around. Uh, there is a condo unit. I don't know how they would feel about it, but we, we have to make sure that people, that it's not within neighborhoods. It might be zoned properly because there's a business there that sits around residents. That's not appropriate. So we have to be very careful. And if it's up to the planning board, they must be aware of our feelings. Maybe we, we could attend a planning board meeting and tell them of our desire and what we don't want to happen. Um, I'm certainly sure if a planning board member was having one of these on their street, I don't think they'd be too happy about it themselves. But be that as it may, I think we have to restructure this, maybe not so much the zones, but how are we gonna do this? Uh, we have one right on Tanner Street, excellent spot. I know they're expanding, but it's out near, so close to a highway. So there's many things that I could say, but please 
listen to the people that spoke. They don't want it in their neighborhood. They don't want it on Columbia Street. They don't want it on Middlesex Street. I don't know how far the, uh, the traffic situation is going to be, but we got to take that into consideration. Uh, thank you so much. Um. Before Councilor Noon speaks, the thing is, I did attend last night's meeting, and Patriot Care was there talking about their expansion. But the one thing is, while Patriot Care went through the process, they went, they had many meetings, especially with the uh, Highland Neighborhood Group. And one of the suggestions, uh, Madam Manager, is that I believe that all all the area, all the neighborhood groups for this different sections of the city, should be a requirement that they attend those meetings there. I'm bothered by some of these one o'clock meetings. I, I just don't understand it. If they're going to have a one o'clock meeting, to me that would mean that they'd have a breakfast meeting at eight o'clock, a one o'clock meeting, then an evening meeting. Mm -hmm. But uh, Council Mercer is correct. We have to get that information because it, it's it's vital. I mean, but last night we saw Patriots Care, you know, continuing their process of communicating to the neighborhood. But I haven't seen that with some of these other groups. Councilor Noon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you mentioned, and I know that speaker mentioned Patriot Care. Patriot Care are much more open and transparent in their process. Uh, some of this meeting, I know that a couple months ago, um, the um, Waldman Farm on Westwood and Stedman snuck up on you. This meeting, community meeting thing, is not hosted by the council or any department of the city. Is, is by, because the State Cannabis Control Commission required them to do so. But that state, you know, the Cannabis Control Commission need to amend those process uh, in terms of having this meeting sneak up on us. It's frustrating this council and the resident, uh, whether it be the Highlands and soon to, going to be the Sandoval, um, it shouldn't happen that way. I understand also that, you know, if you go before the planning board, certainly the planning board going to require, and speakers spoke of the traffic uh, congestion, the parking issue, and the close proximity to the resident and the neighborhood. Those are great concern uh, to uh, the resident of the Highland and or Centerville, wherever soon to be proposed. Uh, I know that the planning board going to require the petition. And, I, you know, right now, if I were to vote a number of these requests, either be Westwood, uh, Middlesex, uh, uh, Columbus, Weber, it's a no-no. Because common sense tell you that's not the right location. It's the proximity to uh, the resident in the neighborhood and to traffic mitigation. Middlesex Street is uh, a zoo. If you, I mean, if, I, I live not too far away from there. I know that the planning board's going to have them, require them, if they get through the planning board, to have a traffic mitigation plan, parking plan, and again, the, the proximity, they're not gonna get away with it. So um, that said, um, I think message need to be sent to maybe the stake, Cannabis Control Commission and maybe ask them to amend their process that, that they require the petitioner to have this community meeting. And, and this community meeting without notify us, the council and the city that this is happening. That's just not right. So um, I thank you for the, um, the opportunity to speak and I, I thank the, the, the resident of the Highland for coming out and speaking against this petition. Thank you. Councilor Conway. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, first of all, I want to thank all the speakers for coming out here uh, and voicing their opinion. Uh, I think it's, it certainly is perfectly clear uh, that they don't want this in their neighborhood, and I fully, I, I fully agree with them. And uh, as I've said before in a couple forums, and that is uh, no neighborhood in the city of Lowell can sustain 
uh, these sites. And, and some of the things that were brought out here tonight, I think, was extremely important. Uh, the fact is that close to the schools or the kids at, at uh, uh, waiting to, to go to school, uh, right in back of people's homes, this is something that I know I wouldn't want, you wouldn't want, and I don't think anyone else does either. So I'm glad they came out here. And I, I'll tell you, the, the, when I'm listening to these people speak, uh, as one of the speakers here mentioned, uh, that they observed the area at one o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, that is, that is absolutely ridiculous because let them go there at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon to 6.30 or 7 o'clock, and they're not going to be able to move, uh, they're not going to be able to move their cars at all. The thing that I, that bothers me a bit on this is the fact that when I'm seeing the process and, and how they've handled it so far, it makes me very nervous to say that eventually when some one of these uh, companies, uh, you know, they settle on a particular site, uh, to you, uh, Madam Manager, uh, they can promise everything under the sun, but what happens, what is the, what is the, the, the comeback for us if they do not follow everything right by the, the, the letter of the law that we're asking. Well, at, at which stage? So, so the, let, let me just quickly um, review where we're at. So, so the um, process is governed by state law, the, the, um, what's required. And the, the first stop is application for a host community agreement. That doesn't mean they will get a license. It means they have the authority to move forward in the process. Uh, as we've looked at these applications for the host community agreement, um, one of the requirements under the state law is that they have a community meeting and that they notify abutters. That's under the state law. So we can't change the law, the state law. Um, but what we did do is we told applicants that they should hold that community meeting before we consider giving them a host community agreement. Why? Because we didn't want people to wake up and read in the newspaper, oh, here's an application at this address that was given a host community agreement. We didn't even know about it, even though you will get notified for planning board. So uh, that's what they're required to do. Now, if they didn't give notice as required to abutters, that's a separate matter, and we will look into that, but we are requiring at least at this initial stage. Uh, one is their application within zoning. Two, we're evaluating all of the impacts in terms of the neighborhood. Three, did they follow the law? Did they follow the process? So to the extent that we have a say, if they didn't, then we will take that into consideration in terms of evaluating their application for a host community agreement. No, what I'm asking is, is after that, after that, after that stage, and let's right. assume they've opened up the doors, and they've promised that they're going to do this, that they're going to have so many uh, spots that they're going to make sure that you know they have details there. They have all these, right. they have all these promises to the people, whether it's in the Highlands or Belvedere or Centerville or whatever. What is our recourse if they don't follow uh, the rules? Uh, after they open the door. That's so the they would have to get a special permit from the planning board, and the special permit would list out all of those requirements from the planning board on a local level. They also have to deal with the state on a number of other representations. But uh, so that we would have the same recourse whenever someone violates their special permit. I see Eric is, is here if you want to address that. No, I, I was going to say that exact statement, which is we'll have two more forms of recourse. One, we put some detailed requirements of traffic plans that are approved by the city in the host community agreement itself. And the host community agreement allows us to terminate that host community agreement, which okay. means they lose their license with the right. state that's, if they violate that. Yeah. And then the second would be the special permit process with the plan. Yeah, board. that's what I'm asking whether they could be terminated. But again, for this particular situation, there is no way on earth these sites should open up in the Highlands. Simple as that. I would not. Uh, I would not appreciate if I was living up there. Thank you. Madam Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to make a motion that any site 
that is going before the planning board that this city council get notice of it. Because when I hear the word notice and a lady comes up to the podium and she says, I live in a condo unit with like 35 and she's the only one that got one, I'm not happy about no. that. And I want to know so that at least me with my mouth can stop making phone calls. I'll yeah. second and that motion. Thank you. And let second me just um, address that. That was a, That's an important point. We don't always get the notice. So for instance, the Columbia Road uh, uh, site, that, we don't even have an application for that site. So if you look it, down. So how so, did it come forward? Because uh, I knew nothing so, about that. So uh, what the companies have done is they've given notice, they advertise, and they don't always tell us. As a matter of fact, we have to sometimes find it in the paper. They're not required to tell us. They are required to tell us after they had the meeting, but not before. So we aren't, some companies have told us when they're gonna hold a meeting, but they don't always. So it's not, you know, it's not that the city gives notice about these meetings, well, but certainly the planning board is a different, um, different matter. The planning and, board, well, who, chose these sites here? Who chose these each, particular streets? Each company, each company applies, um, and they, as long as they're within the zoning. So, so each company has made application for various sites. For and example, they, Wellman, um, uh, Wellman Farms that was at 1012 Westford Street, they're now out at Rogers Street. They withdrew their Westford Street, and now they're applying at, on Rogers so, Street. So let's say they have to come to someone at City Hall to, to tell them that they're gonna hold a community meeting. They don't tell us always. So they make an application. Eric, you can, you can address this. I do know that Shauna Forcier in my office tries to track every, every meeting, so we try and find out when we have those meetings. Um, sure, so, so we're, we at the city are at this, we su suffer from the same notice issues that the neighbors have, which is they're required to let the planning board know and they're required to let the city manager know, but sometimes we don't get those notices timely uh, and sometimes, unfortunately, they've forgotten to notice us and we've, right. we've let them know that. Um, well, they but, better not forget to notify us. But they don't have to let us know any sooner than they let the residents know. So the city doesn't have any kind of advance notice of this before they send something to the abutters. But that's all governed by state law. It's not something that we control. The state says these are the people you have to notice and this is how much time you have to let them know. This is not a perfect law. Gee, it's not a perfect world, but we're trying to make it that way so that we could all be on the same page and be all together. Now, the, the planning board notice is governed by us and by my office, and it's a much more rigorous notice process. Well, my motion still stands, and I'd like a roll call. Can I, no. can I just add quickly? No. no. Sorry. Roll call. Roll call. Council Malinati. Yes. Council Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Uh, Council Cirillo. Council Conway. Yes. Council Rally. Yes. Council Kennedy. Yes. Council Leahy. Yes. Council Mercy. Yes, thank you. Eight years. All right, I still need a motion to accept this as a report of progress and adopt all motions to move by Councilor Conway, second by Councilor Elliott. Thank you. Next, we, uh, did we finish? All right, regarding uh, communications uh, from the city manager, I need a motion to accept the placement file. So moved. By Councilor Kennedy, second, second by Councilor Noon. Next, we have Thank communication. You. Appoint Richard A. Cody and Matthew Alkins to the Veterans Commission. I need a motion to adopt. So moved. By Councilor Noon. Good job. Seconded by Councilor Mercia. Roll call. Councilor Milanazzo. Yes. Councilor Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Councilor Cirillo. Councilor Conway. Yes. Councilor Elliott. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Leahy. Yes. Councilor Mercy. Yes. yes. Eight years. Thanks, Roger. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, yes. Mr. Elkins is here tonight. Thank you for my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Matthew, congratulations. Excuse me. Um, we, we also have Mr. Cody here this Cody. evening. Well, Mr. Cody, like who wants to go for us? Mr. Cody? My name is Richard Cody. I live 19 Veddeston Ave. And uh, 
trying to get on the Veterans Commission the committee. Well, congratulations and thank you for your service. Well, you just got on. You just got on. <laughs> Evening. Uh, my name is Matt Outkins, uh, as all of you know. <laughs> um, you all know that I'm very active in the veterans community, uh, and I've been looking forward to being able to work with the city uh, as a veteran to help all of our brothers and sisters that are out there. Uh, and I thank you very much for your faith and everything that you're instilling in me. Um, and I look forward to working with you and the rest of the commission to better our veterans and basically try to make a better world for them. Because as anyone that knows a vet, we've had a hard time. And um, it's due time that the city comes together and the people come together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next. We, also, we have communication to accept the resignation of Joseph Mullen from the Election Commission. Need a motion to accept and place on file? So moved. By Councilor uh, Kennedy, seconded by Councilor Conway. Then we have votes from the city manager. Vote to accept gifts of floor hockey equipment for the Recreation Department. Waive the full reading, second reading by title. Authorize city manager on behalf of the city of Lowell to accept the gift from Anthony Savard, site manager of the Recreation Department floor hockey program for four sets of newly slightly used goalie equipment for the use by the Recreational Department. Need a motion to adopt? So moved. By Councilor Kennedy, second by Councilor Noon. Roll call. Councilor Milanazzo. Yes. Councilor Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Councilor Cirillo. Councilor Conway. Yes. Councilor Elliott. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Leahy. Yes. Councilor Mercy. Yes. Eight yes. Next, we have orders from the city manager. Order to dedicate the signature bridge in the Highland, in the Hamilton Canal District for Nikki Songus. Waive the full reading and second reading by title. Designate the signature bridge in the Hamilton Canal Innovation District as the Nicola, Nicola S. Songus Bridge in honor of former Congresswoman <coughs> Songus. Motion to adopt. So moved. By Councilor Elliott, second by Councilor Mercia. Uh, roll call. Councilor Milanaz. Yes. Councilor Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Councilor Cirillo. Councilor Conway. Yes. Councilor Elliott. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Leahy. Yes. Councilor Mercia. Yes. Res yes. Resolutions to support House Bill Number 1372, an act relative to constables. Uh, to support House Bill Number 1372 as an act relative to constables. We have the full reading, second reading by title. Uh, I'm sorry, I did that. Motion to adopt. So moved. Councilor Milanazzo, second by Councilor. Uh, Kennedy, roll call. Councilor Milanazzo. Yes. Councilor Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Councilor Cirillo. Mm -hmm. Councilor Conway. Yes. Councilor Elliott. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Leahy. Yes. Councilor Mercia. Yes. yes. We have the Transportation Subcommittee of August 26, 2019. Councilor Elliott. I, I will be, be brief, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. This was uh, a Transportation Subcommittee that met a couple of weeks ago. Uh, in large part, it was we discussed many things, including traffic calming uh, policy that will be forthcoming. Uh, we did adopt the minutes this evening, but um, the main uh, purpose of the meeting was to talk about the roundabout up in <coughs> excuse me the Patakaville section relative to the new market uh, market basket. So um, we will be having more meetings, and a policy will be forthcoming on on traffic calming and uh, an update on that roundabout. I guess question is um, just for the future, um, as this roundabout moves forward, do they have to go to the planning board or do they do not have to go to the planning board? I don't expect that answer now um, through you, Madam Manager, to the, or the solicitor, but I know that um, I have received questions on it. So uh, that's just a, it's a brief report of progress. Um, it was just, it was, a, it was a good meeting. We talked about many traffic issues, update on, on the bridges and so many other, particularly the center, um, Central Street Bridge. Uh, more information will be forthcoming. Report of progress. Madam Manager, are you all set? Also. Yeah, we'll get we'll get back to you on the on, on the process. I know they've been before yep. many boards, so we'll find out where with regard to that 
particular question on the roundabout. We'll okay. get that Thanks. to the council. Need a motion to accept this report by no. by Council Kennedy, second by Council Conway. Next, we have nine three, nine four, and nine five. Could we like a motion to uh, bundle. So moved. Okay. Motion to accept and accompany in orders. So, so moved. Seconded by. Second. Also no. Thank you. Next, we have uh, wire inspector National Grid and Verizon, New England, to install one new pole on Nesmith Street. Re Pardon? 10.1, the claim is a claim. 10.1. No, I'm, we have nine. Oh, I, I bundled it. I'm sorry. I'm, it's a long evening. All right, next is 10.1, claim, personal injury. I need a motion to refer to the law department for report. So moved. So moved. By Councilor Kennedy, second by Councilor Conway. And we have... National Grid Verizon New England request relocation of J.O. poles at Varnum Avenue at Old Ferry Road. Motion referred to a public hearing of September 24th, 2019 at 7 p.m. by Councilor Noon, second by Councilor Milanazzo. We now have uh, motions. First one by Councilor Conway. Request that you manage meet with proper departments, partners, and other entities to develop Lowell's own historic walking freedom trail. And the second. Councilor Mercia, Councilor Conway. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think that we're probably all aware of the fact that uh, that we have the, the Freedom Trail in Boston, and they also have one in Salem. Uh, and I think that um, it, it might not be a bad idea to have that in Lowell, if at all possible, because of the fact that we have such a rich history, and I think it's important to, uh, to let people know, let our, our students know, uh, you know, I was very fortunate back in the, the early uh, 70s to teach the first course in Lowell history, and it was quite interesting for our students to go around and see exactly uh, what Lowell was, at, was all about. And um, I think it might not be a bad idea to contact uh, certain individuals like, uh, or groups like the National Park or Tourism. UMass, business community, and also I would uh, perhaps include uh, uh, Richard Howe, and Richard Howe, of course, does tours um, uh, periodically, uh, and another individual, Chris Hayes, too, might be somebody that we, we tap into. Uh, I think that uh, it certainly could be something that it would enhance uh, tourism. Uh, people could use this. You get people coming into the city, uh, it, it's almost a form of economic development. They have to, they have to buy things, they have to eat, and so forth. So uh, again, I, uh, I, I look forward to the report, and hopefully uh, we can get this done. I realize it's something that is not, it's not done overnight, but I think it's worthwhile the investment of time. Uh, somebody mentioned, and I, I'll be quite frank with you, I don't know what it is, but they said, you know, you should mention the QR. Uh, app on your cell phone. Well, obviously, I don't have one, but yeah. uh, it might be something that they were talking about that can make things where people can do these tours on their own. So, anyway, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. I look forward to the report. Thank you. Councilor Lee? Yeah, thank you. Can you just follow up? Um, we, we did something like this a few years ago, too, so I don't know what happened with it, but um, it's a good motion because I put it on before. So, um, but there was something, and it was you could plug in and listen and follow a trail. So, just see what where that. We, went we will. We'll, we will look into what what there is and what okay. was done. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Just as a side um, comment, um, and I think it is a good motion. I'll support it. Um, there were signs on the highway that still bring people or try to bring people to the Industrial History Museum as well as the Revolving Museum either on 93 or 495, and I'm just thinking, since those have closed, uh, whose responsibility is it to, um, you know, deal with the fact that they are not open any longer? We'll check into it. It's Mass Dot, I okay. believe, but that's how we had them put up, but we'll, we will check into okay. having them removed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All set. Next, by uh, Councilor Conway, requires city manager to provide update regarding the heating systems within the city's schools and other municipal buildings. 
And second by Councilor Elliott, Councilor Conway. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be very brief with this. I, I, we, everybody here, all the councilors, we've talked about preventative maintenance. And uh, here, here's the perfect example. Uh, each and every year for heaven knows how many years, we've had to put up with problems with our heating system. We get calls from parents all the time. There's no way on earth that we should have students with gloves on and their coats on and so forth. Uh, it just is, it's just not appropriate. Now, I believe the answer, or one of the answers, is to put the system on now so we can check it, to find out what works, what doesn't work, and if we have an issue or a problem, let's order those parts so that we get this up and running when it is colder. Because quite often what's happened, and we've seen it, we've all seen it here, they wait and wait and wait, and before you know it, they put it on sometime in November, then there's a problem, now it's gonna take two months to get, uh, to get the part, and it becomes, um, it, it's not appropriate for our students and our staff to have to put up with. So if we could get a report, get these things cranking up to find out what, what works and what doesn't work and what we have to address. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have by Council Mercia, who has, of course, City Manager have development, de developmental services and Lowell Police Department investigate ways to stop trash buildup along the riverbanks at the end of Burnham Road. Second by Councilor Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There is a Facebook, and I'm not good with computers or Facebook. I don't have Facebook, but it's called nextdoor.com, and it's involving the neighbors in Belvedere. And lo and behold, I can read it, but I can't post on it. I don't know how to set it up. I probably should get one of my grandchildren. They'll help me. So when they have a problem, I can't respond to them because I don't know how to set it up. But be that as it may, there is a concern. There's something going on at the end of my street. Now, I see people walking by. I don't stop them and say, are you going to potty down the end of the street? I don't do that. I see sometimes kids going down with a fishing pole. I used to love to fish myself. I, I don't stop them and say, you better not be pottying down there. But lo and behold, they are pottying down there. And there are cars that go by and stop at the end of the street and they potty down in, in, on the riverbank. Because at the end of my street is a dead end with two neighbors that live there. And one of the neighbors, would have called me if there's a problem, but never did. So I assumed people are saying there's a problem, but the lady that lives right down the end of the dead end street would have called me. So I called one of my male neighbors to go down there because they had me believing they were tents there and drugs there, and, and I was afraid that I didn't know what to expect there. So the neighbor brought along Billy, which happened to be a Billy club, in case we were gonna encounter a problem. So we went down there and we looked all around and we walked down the path and as I could see down to the riverbank, which was a very deep drop of like, I don't know, maybe 15 feet. I didn't know how to get down to the riverbank, but I didn't see any trash. I didn't see any tents. I didn't see any of that. And so as I'm coming out of there, Lo and behold, my neighbor that lives down the end saw me and the, the male neighbor coming out of the woods. And I said, there's nothing going on here. We're looking to see if there's any problem there. She said, well, actually, there are people that go there and they party. So here's the situation. This is, I, it's a rather a little bit late that I'm saying it, but I passed around pictures of a lot of trash buildup because her son actually went down there, this lady at the end of the street, and took some pictures that I'm sending around with a lot of trash buildup and a lot of potty and that took place. And I'm not saying that it's all in Lowell. There are some in, in some of the debris is in Tewksbury as well, because we're right on the Tewksbury line. The, and the lady at the end of the street told me that she had contacted the police and there's really not much that they can do about the party and that's going on. But remember that when this council said we didn't want uh, um, jet skis to be around the 
Belgard bathhouse or where the children go swimming. So now what they're doing is they're taking their jet skis and they're putting them and launching them from Methuen and they're coming down to that portion of the, which is the end of my street and they're picking up people, putting them on the rides on the ski, uh, jet ski and they're partying and leaving a lot of trash there as you can see from the pictures. I don't know what we could do, but if we could contact the police department and I don't know who else to take a look down there to see what's going on. I don't know how we can stop it, but they have a legitimate concern and I'm trying to bring this message up to the city. I don't know where to turn. Um, I asked the woman, why didn't you call me? You've called me before on other issues. She said, because the people that are coming and going down partying, they come with cars, they've been very respectful to me. They don't cause any trouble. And these are the people that seem to be bringing their trash back with them. So she said, I didn't have a problem, but evidently this uh, Facebook neighborhood page has a very big problem that says I'm not doing my job and <laughs> I'm just letting it go. I'm not trying to let it go. I don't know where to turn for help here. So. If we can get a copy of the pictures, Councilor, sure, you too, can have when, these when pictures. they're through, that would be because helpful. Because this Thank lady you. at the end of the street, her son actually went down. I don't know how he got down 15 feet. I didn't see the, I didn't feel like breaking a leg, but I didn't know how to jump down there. I didn't know how to do it. How's it getting then, Councilor Leahy? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just briefly, I think this is a good motion. Um, didn't the police department recently acquire a a new vehicle, was that an amphibious vehicle? A UT, uh, 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 well, there is a boat, we do have a, a police boat, and then we have a, it's a u utility, um, uh, UTV. Yes. That's, right, but that's not that's not amphibious, but we do have a boat. We do. It, yeah, okay. But we use the boat up above the falls for the most part, don't we? That That is where it is, so we, we would have to look and see, can it access this part of the river, we're not, we're not sure. You could only access it by a ramp in Methuen, and that's how they're coming down to so that So we'll call portion. the Methuen police. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. Absolutely. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I walked down there. There's six bags of garbage. It just needs to be picked up and brought up. So if we bring it up to the edge of the road, maybe we can just get DPW to get rid of it. Uh, I'll go down with Councilor Elliott over the weekend, and we'll right. lug the bags up. Yeah. You're strong. We'll get it. It's just right. six large garbage. Thank you. They've been partying all summer and they leave their garbage there. Thank you. All right. You're all set. Okay. Next, by Councilor Lee, request the manager to provide update regarding barrel ordinance. Need a second by Councilor Milanazzo. So, thank you. What I mean by the barrel ordinance is um, can we find out where we are with uh, a, a few seniors have been calling us? We just need to make a decision as a council and say, look, you know, a big barrel costs X amount, small barrel costs X amount, and this is your senior discount. I think the way we had it before, where if you're a senior, you get a small barrel and you pay less, well, some people want the big barrel. So we should just figure out an easy yeah. way and just say, look, here's your, temp here's your senior discount. This is what the barrel costs. So we, that, that matter has been sent to the environmental subcommittee to, to amend the ordinance in whatever language, whatever the desire of the council is on this. And we will um, follow up with, with the committee. Um, we're happy to provide the, you know, the, what, what it would mean in terms of dollars and cents and sure. costs and so forth. But okay. that, that is, um, and we, we've received calls and, and I know people are interested, but it is a matter that has to be amend, we have to amend the ordinance. Mm -hmm. We can't just do it, but, and that's why it was sent to the subcommittee. So we'll, we'll follow up on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, next by Council Lee, request city manager provide update regarding the school repairs done during the past summer. Second by? Second. Noon. Sure. So this pretty much speaks for itself. Last year, um, I went around to about half a dozen schools and there was painting projects, ceiling tiles. I know that they're going over to do the cement at the Lincoln. Um, we could just get an update on what they accomplished over the summer. Thank you. Absolutely. Announcements? Yes. Yes, Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. I have two announcements. Um, 
this is the first one on Thursday, September 19th. I'm saying it because we, we won't meet until after it will be election day uh, on primary day. But on Thursday, September 19th from 6 to 10 o'clock at night at Cavalero's Restaurant at 573 Lawrence Street, um, we are doing an event. It's called the Fall Fest. It's one of Merrimack Valley's most popular charitable network events focusing on raising awareness and funds to provide services for individuals with disability and their families. Easter Seals provides services to children and adults with disabilities and the United States veterans have equal opportunities to learn, live, work and play. I'm a chair of the event along with the co-chairs uh, co Jenny Nunes and Lisa Saab with the Saab uh, Family Foundation uh, and Julie Rogers and Gina Gilbo from Lowell Five and Manny Cavallero from Cavallero's Restaurant. It's $60 per ticket but it's going to a very good cause and as well as I was asked to if I could say this for uh, Larry Finn from the Lowell Fire Department. He informs me that there's a friendly competition between three establishments in Lowell who will run a coat drive for coats for, from and above. Cobblestones, who won the last two times this event, is competing with Dudley's on Merrimack Street and Keep. Keep is where Ricardo's was on Gorham Street. These three uh, establishments uh, competing to bring your unused winter coats to any of the three establishments along with any donations of money on Thursday, the same night, September 19th, Thursday from 6 to 10. Firefighters from the Lowell Fire Department will be on hand at all three locations to accept coats and monetary donations, all in the name of coats from and above. 100% of the money donated will go to buy new coats for kids. They intend to buy 200 coats. The coats giveaway will be sometime in October, of which the date will be announced later. These are school children that'll be getting these coats. So these are two very good events to help people within the community. So thank you for letting me say it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Dallas Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have two announcements. One is that the uh, the Lowell Spinners are playing for the uh, New York Penn League Championship this evening in Brooklyn. I don't know how they're doing. Hopefully, they're doing they're not doing that well. Well, well, maybe now that we've brought it up, they'll do a little better in the closing. Brooklyn, Brooklyn's winning right now. <laughs> okay. And then the second thing I would I would just like to point out that this is the last meeting for James Austis, who will be leaving. Um, yeah leaving the mayor's office soon. And I think that James, during his tenure in the mayor's office, has been very helpful and accommodating to every member of the city council. And I also would just like to wish him well in his new position. Thanks. <laughs> I was going to say something, Senator, but I was going to refer to someone taking him from me. You know? But uh, I wish James well. I mean, he's been very... It's, well, it's happened to me, Mr. Mayor, so I know how you feel. <laughs> uh, motion? To, yes, Councilor. Uh, just one other thing. Tomorrow morning at 9.30 at the Lowell High School, they'll have the 9-11 uh, uh, memorial service for anyone that wants to attend. Motion to adjourn? Need a motion. Okay. Councilor Noon, second by Councilor Milanazzo. Thank you. Thank you.